Hello all, I'm Dr. Dheeraj, I'm an anesthesiologist. Recently I came across a guy called Michael Reeves. He has made a YouTube video on how he built a surgical robot. After watching the video, I have gone crazy and this fellow is a crazy insane genius. He has made a surgical robot in his home and after watching the video I really felt like insane. I think you should also watch this video. I watched the video just now but I am ready to watch the video again with you guys. And I am going to react to this video. Let's start the reaction. Da Vinci surgical system is the most advanced streamlined surgical experience for minimally invasive surgery available in the world the today. I can build that. No. Global health crisis going. My house is on full goddamn quarantine, and I'll probably be dead in a week anyway. Not from the virus, like like an electrocution accident or something. It's actually giving me a lot of free time, and what better way to spend free time right now than to help the medical industry? Now I can't do any chemistry or biology or like body stuff, yuck. But I can do robotics, and let me tell you, those Da Vinci surgery robotics rat bastards are ripping hospitals off. Look at this: two million dollars for one shitty robot. They what he told is actually true. So so much of uh, amount for each robot and also you need to buy the consumables in the form of the the hands that we use and if any repairs come uh, we need to buy the annual maintenance charges again for the company so guy is trying to do is actually good he's trying to build a robot at a cheaper price that's what he's trying to do michael Reeves, you are great you can spend that on a couple hundred bandages or like one ambulance ride in the US. We can build a better surgery robot for a lot less. Come on. The biggest flaw in Da Vinci's design is that it relies on these clunky, slow robotic arms for movement. Say you're operating on a patient's foot. He starts screaming out in pain. You gotta get up to his face, smack him around a little bit, make him shut up. Good fucking luck with these robotic arms. They're slow as shit and they don't have any travel distance. Instead, we're gonna mount the surgical tools to a rail system that can move anywhere on the operating table. Hey, look, it's past Michael. You know it took him five whole days to 3D model and build one rail carriage? What a dick. Shit. Hey man, shut the fuck up. This shit's hard. Maybe you little bitch. I'm the narrator. I'm like, God, you can't kill me. I'm Here's what the final carriage looks like. You see, it uses wheel bearings to travel up and down the slots in this aluminum rod. But Michael, you're just gonna use your hand to make it move? No, you're stupid, and I hate you. For power, we're using a brushless DC motor and an O drive to turn. I'm really not understanding what he's trying to tell. I'm a doctor. I'm not a mechanical or electrical engineer. But what I'm understanding is he's actually going into details of how the Da Vinci works and how the the uh, technology is there inside and he's trying to build it in a proper scientific way I think so, an engineering way. And this in a kind of like a brushless servo motor, do I know what that means? Absolutely fucking not, I've never done this before. What I do know is someone told, my voice cracked, <laughs> what I do know is someone told me this would be fast and very accurate and all you have to do to put it in is... I forgot to record all the sound effects, okay? Give me a fucking break. Actually, as an editor, I, I can tell you the editing style of Michael Reeves is very good. <laughs> I got the motor very professionally hooked up to the driver board, which is hooked up to my computer, so we can see what this thing can do. Okay, so this is the like calibration sequence. It needs to do this before it actually runs. Oh, that's so fucking sick! Ah, I think it, it should be a little faster though. Uh, oh, okay, the motor has default parameters, so you can just turn those off. Let's try it out now. <laughs> Such kind of movements are not allowed in human body. In human body, the movements need to be more precise and fine, and very slow movement should be there. Such kind of movements will lead to a massive disaster inside the operating room. Oh, bad, 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 bad. <laughs> That's good, that's, that's fast. Give me one second. Okay, you just stand, stand right there. Whoa, it's pretty cool. <laughs> we just gotta put a few of these together and it looks like this. I did the quirky little snap teleportation thing, right? That was three weeks ago. I'm fucking tired. But I built this test platform out of aluminum and wood that I stole from my girlfriend's bed frame. It's not like I can go to Home Depot and find so this is a prototype so I can write and test the software before I build the actual thing, but even the prototype is pretty cool. It's the same idea with the motor carriage on the x-axis, but now I have two additional motors on the y-axis. And on their own, they're just motors. They don't know how to talk to each other, they don't know how to cooperate, but if you write some software that can talk to all the motors, you can make it do pretty much anything you want. This is the homing sequence. It figure out some... 
So actually this guy has uh, gone through how the Davinci works. Even Davinci works on some kind of a pulley system. So this guy is actually trying to make it in a proper way. Let's see how it goes. Sounds of the machine by measuring the amperage of the, the, the motor on the motor when they stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can make it do this shit. Maybe not as stable as you want it to be, but yeah, it's just a prototype. <laughs> It is not stable man, please make it more stable. Even though it's a prototype, but still such kind of movements are not allowed in the operating room and human body. <laughs> so stupid. So I'm controlling with my mouse right now. It looks jerky and awful, but it's actually got a really good amount of precision to it. It's kind of going in a circle from the top down view. Like I said, this is not the final surgery robot. It's going to be much more refined, much more medical looking, you know, much more safe for the user. And all that movement was controlled by the code I wrote. Don't worry, I'm not going to show it. I know everyone thinks it's boring. So we try I don't give a shit what you think. Look at this dynamic up bounds detection routine that's fucking sick. Here's the switch. You put it together to hit the bounds of your machine. Yeah, fuck. That it's Instead, writes some code that sets the motor forward until it starts using a lot of power. Then you know you hit the edge of the rail. Then you know exactly where you are in relation to the balance of the machine. It's fucking sick. Look how cool the code part is, guys. I'm gonna keep going. This part applies the scaling factors that are calculated as a function of the input. But Michael, I hear you ask. So you can move the carriage over any part of the operating table you want. Great. But how are you gonna move the medical tools up and down to engage with the patient? Well, that's where the carriage utility mechanism comes into play. That's the thing that's gonna move the scalpel or the clamp or whatever up and down, which is great. There's just a so now I'm understanding what he's trying to do. Till now we tried to create a moment in the x-axis, but actually during the surgery you need another moment which is up and down to pick up and grab the organs or a tumor, which whatever you're operating. So now he's trying to do that. Small problem, slight problem. Well, I built it. I built it, which is a good thing. My original plan was, you know, just to have a thin piece of plastic with a motor attached to it that moves a plate. Easy. But then I fucked it. I saw that thing. <laughs> okay, there's no way that's going to survive, so I can make it a little strong. You know, I may as well make it go a little faster. I got a little carried away. Now it looks like a time bomb and it weighs 10 fucking pounds. It works great. The motor precisely moves the mounting plate up and down wherever you want it to go. The thing is, I just don't know if those motors... I don't know sir, whether he is building that or somebody is building for him. They are looking like a massive uh, technological items. He has already built a big machinery. Now. To handle 10 pounds, so we're going to have to do a little test. Michael, why don't you just use the carriage utility mechanism to test it out? Well, it took me a long time to build and it's fucking beautiful. So prime work, it looks like it's handling small movements pretty well. Why access that? Now this is a, a very accurate way of testing. So what happens is after you build a, a particular structure for a robot, then all the arms and everything will hang from the robot. So you need to test it with different weights so that it doesn't fall on the patient. Okay, that's not that bad. Okay. Oh, it's fine. It'll be fine. We're getting tired. Go ahead and make the final version. And it looks like this. I did the stupid hand thing again. It's been three more weeks. I have severe depression. But Michael, where's the surgery robot? Wait for it. Wait for it. Oh, big reveal. This is a surgery robot. Massive payoff. Huge, I have brain damage. Behold the superior surgery robot, you Da Vinci shitter tins. It's got the cum. It's got the cable management. It's got the super fucking hard to reach driver boards. I don't know why I put them under here. I thought it would look cool. But Michael, does it even work? Does it work? <laughs> does it work? I don't know if it works. You don't I haven't turned it on yet. I've been too afraid since it took me so long to build, so I turned the camera on so you can at least see my tears when it tears itself apart. I'm worried about this shit because when I built it, yeah! Alright, the machine's working. Now we can start to control it. But Michael, where's the controller? Fuck you. You are the controller. I got oh, this VR hand tracking super. camera on Amazon that works super goddamn well. So you just take the hand coordinates from this, pipe them in the surgery robot, and Excellent. take them. Wow. <laughs> super. <laughs> oh, boom. The thing Fuck is moving by move. detecting Why motion of his hands. You're just floating your hand. I think this, uh, if even DaVinci engineers are watching this particular video, I think you can copy this from this is Michael Riss idea. I, I, this actual DaVinci works uh, and you have to put your hands into that and operate the robot, surgical robot, but he has actually taken it to next level. By uh, motion detection, the robot is actually working. Maybe you can think about this. Robot go here, Ooh, robot do surgery here, so oh, patient bleeding there, oh, do surgery there, on that part. How about you do surgery over here, now do surgery over there, and now do surgery Fuck you, Da Vinci, you shitty robot can't do that. You need to squeeze those little metal robot seats to do yours. 
Holy shit. Before I sell my design to surgeons across the nation, we have to attach some surgical tools to the cum, because otherwise it's just a big ass robot. So let's buy a scalpel on Amazon. Wow, that is just unacceptable. Scalpels are gonna take a whole three days. Wow, that's pretty reasonable. Fuck no, that's messed up. Dang global health crisis. That's far too long. If only I had an alternative. If you really think about it, scalpels are just shitty, smaller knives. So why don't we just use bigger, better knives? Like, uh, hello, weirdy how No. Wake up, sheep. You can't use such a big knife for surgery. Are you tired of outdated surgical technology? Are you looking for the cutting edge in power, precision, and usability? He's, he's made an ad for himself to uh, sell his product. Look no further. The future of surgical robotics is here. <laughs> Look at the fucking knife! <laughs> Unlike some other surgical systems, we've run a gamut of tests to ensure our machine has power. I'm gonna sell a pineapple with oh, fuck mincing the operation. No! <laughs> Operate on it. Surgery <laughs> over here now. Um, patient, small incision. Uh, small incision, remove the patient. We commence surgery on the patient. The power isn't the only thing we strive for. Now, in this kind of uh, gross moments, you cannot uh, operate on a patient. It should be more finer and precise. Let's see whether he is going to achieve that or not. He is still maybe in the intermediate level of uh, innovation. For precision is an essential tenet of surgery. Yeah, and that's what is no precision is essential. Testing for accuracy. What the fuck is that? Hey, great did do some painting. Yo, Lily, come on, please. Ah! Oh shit! Ah! <laughs> Draw the Mona Lisa. Draw the Mona Lisa. <laughs> Yeah, see, for, to paint any object, you need a lot of precision. I think he's trying to do that. He's trying to, uh, you know, get his girlfriend draw a painting so that he's actually trying to refine it better. So how accurate my machine is. It'll be so long. <laughs> He's not able to do that. Let's see a Da Vinci try to do that. You might be wondering, is the system FDA approved? <laughs> no! <laughs> it's not FDA approved, man. But don't just take our word for it. Here's what a real medical professional has to say about this innovative new technology. We're gonna go for like a laparoscopic appendectomy. So if we just make a small incision above the chest hole for some procedures. <laughs> we don't want to buy this robot. We still have a lot more accurate control than a lot of surgical systems. Fuck. <laughs> Like I was saying, moving the patient is a lot easier with the system. So like you have to manually move them. Who be? Uh, would you add this to your hospital? Do you think hospitals could adopt? Uh, no, no hospital can adopt I such grass robot. Killing Last but not least, we've made our machine so intuitive that anyone can do surgery with no prior training. So you've never seen this flu machine before in your life. It's perfect because this study is to see if we can bring someone from zero skill level all the way up to the ability of a surgeon. Boot up right in front of not too close because it's kind of dangerous. So just put your head up. He's scaring the machine out of Higher up controls the knife position. You can move it further closer and it'll get further away from you. We're gonna make a small incision right above. It's actually a good idea. Here. There's someone sick. There's someone sick. <laughs> They're trying to do a neurosurgery here, and you can see how gross it is. I don't recommend this for any kind of surgeries. Okay, so you're doing it wrong. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, shit. So, so, what, fuck? I don't know from where he got this blood, <laughs> artificial blood he has created to create the inf uh, effect in the video. Oh, you're clearly doing another incision to stop. Plug the hole with the knife. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Nice. Yeah, perfect. Oh, what's this? Oh, this, what's, it's okay, no, it's fine. It's, it's learning, it's a learning experience. Try and retract the knife from the... Actually, brain surgery, the robots are not totally evolved. Many companies are trying to do them, but uh, they actually only give you a kind of direction and depth, but none of the robots are actually going inside and operating, like how they do in abdominal surgeries and cancer surgeries and prostate and uh, urolo urological procedures. Okay, so let's, let's just try and get it out of... <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Even his girlfriend is little. Okay, good incision. Ah! If your patient's over here and you don't want him to be over here, move him over here. Do some surgery over here. Move him back. I don't even know what surgery this is supposed to be. Thank you for watching. That concludes research and development for my surgical system. If you're a hot. This is not research and development, this is more like killing people.
hospital looking to try it out, follow me on Twitter, subscribe to me on YouTube, and maybe, just maybe, I'll let you borrow it for a bit. Remember, stay in school, smoke crack, fuck you, Da Vinci Roll. I think uh, the video is going to end after this. So, so this fellow is a crazy genius. The way he built the surgical robot till last seven, last 25 percent of the video, I think, is done for just comedy and fun. But the way he has taken up is a proper robotic way. The building, the technology, building the software inside that, and getting the movements, the x-axis movements and the y-axis movements. All that is pretty accurate. But this guy is a real genius. I can tell you, he'll do. I think uh, he should. Uh, come to operation theaters to watch more surgeries and then he'll understand how, how precise it should be in real life and uh, why we pay so much of a month for Darwin C. He'll understand only if he comes inside the surgical uh, areas. I, I request Michael Rees, you can come to India and visit our hospital and I will take you into the operating room and show you Darwin C. It is there in our hospital and then you can get a better idea. You can build a better robot, I think. This robot I don't recommend to anyone to buy. Even though it's just a funny video, but uh, I seriously liked your video and I subscribed to your channel also. Yeah, thank you very much, guys, for following the video till the end. And uh, uh, please subscribe to Michael Reeves' channel also. He is uh, ultimate insane genius. That's all I'll tell. Watch my other videos also. Thank you very much for following the video till now.